All right, so what's up, SG3 Communications, brothers and sisters? I wanted to come at you today with a video, and there's a lot going on with the ESPN situation with Maria Taylor, Rachel Nichols, the New York Times article, and it got me thinking about crisis communication, crisis statements, and what are the things that you really want to get right when you're responding to a crisis situation. So I want to share with you six things that I think it's really important that you focus on when you think about a crisis communication statement that you're going to make, because any misstep can take an already bad situation and make it uh, times whatever you know, two, three, four worse than what it actually was in the beginning. So the first one that I want to focus on is it's really important to focus on a few key strategic messages that you want to get across in your statement. And you want to think this through carefully uh, because as you'll see with the other five points, you don't want to screw up. So you have to look at all of these in totality, but keep your point, your number of points that you want to make short and sweet and direct. That's going to be a big key to number one. Number two, and you have to do this very carefully, what I'm going to say here, but correct misinformation with verified truthful information. But you have to make sure that you don't do it in a way it sounds like you're wagging your finger, that you're talking down to people who may be upset with an action that you took. That's the reason for making the crisis communication statement. So gently correct any misinformation that is out there, but do it in a way that shows empathy. And empathy is a word that will resurface again later in this list of points. Point number three, don't make excuses or sound defensive. And when we find ourselves in crisis situations, so many times a gut reaction is to let our emotions show through. And we start making excuses for our actions. We appear defensive even when we're trying not to. That could be through our words. That could be through talking points. That could be through body language. So you have to be very careful not to make excuses, sound like you're making excuses or sound defensive. And when I say sound like you're making excuses, you have to not only think from your perspective, what you're delivering, you also have to view it. You have to step out of your own body, so to speak, and think about it the way it's going to be received. And this is one of the hardest things for people to do. Number four, stay focused on the issues at hand. Don't get sidetracked with comparisons to other issues, other situations. Stay focused on your message, your situation. Anything else is going to look like you're trying to muddy the waters to not make your situation look as bad as it might be. And that could do more harm than good. Number five, express genuine empathy and detail specific action steps that you intend to take to correct what went wrong, if that is applicable to your situation. So these are pretty straightforward. I mentioned empathy before. You have to be empathetic. That's what people want. A lot of times in these cases, when you screw up, you, people want you to apologize they want you to basically get down on your hands and knees and beg for forgiveness. And so sometimes people are unwilling to do that, but at the very least, you have to come across as empathetic. And that's a lot easier if you actually are empathetic. So keep that in mind. And then the action steps are very important. People wanna know not just that you're sorry for what happened, but you're going to take these steps to better ensure that it doesn't happen in the future. And finally, number six, simplest, most direct of all, tell the truth. Be honest, tell the truth. That's what you have to do. Anything that comes across as intentionally deceptive or 
just an outright lie uh, in more blatant, straightforward terms is only going to hurt you and wipe out any gains that you might have made in terms of responding to a crisis situation. So those are six things to keep in mind when you find yourself in a crisis situation and you have to respond. Following these principles will help put you in a much better position to respond and not make an already bad situation worse.